Greetings, fellow YouTubers. Uh, this is Cetrasum of the Fanatic, also known as Scott Felver. I'm in Scrooge, come see me in Mel Havre. We play for two more weeks. Video's probably not coming up by then, but whatever. So, been a while since I've done a deck profile for you guys. We're in here at Three Days Card Shop. It's awesome stuff. But doing a deck profile for Dark Lords. This is my personal take on them. They're not 100% competitive. I don't have desires. I don't like the card. I like having cards that, you know, I like making sure every card counts. So, without further ado, let's get started. Basically, we built this deck just three boxes of Destiny Soldiers from me, Andrew, and Eric. So, got everything in it except for the Nastens, which I purchased on my own for relatively cheap. They were about six bucks each when I got them. But let's just start things off with the leading lady herself, Dark Lord Itchel. There we go. Card skyrocketed up in price. It's. You, you need her to run the deck, really. She did fix his hand. She's traded for any Dark Lord cards. On top of her, we have three Superbia. Yeah, these are the super rares. I'm working on getting a third Ultra from the GX Legendary Collection. It's it's on the way, don't worry about it. And next to get some other Dark Lords that go in there. I'm also running two Zerados. Mostly because I like having two. I like having the option of potentially banishing one off of a lure, so that way I still have the other one in the graveyard. Again, I like to make sure that every card counts. But two Zerados, he's a nice level eight. When you can get him out, you could Lightning Vortex the whole field and all that good stuff. Next, the only card that I actually bought for the deck was three Nastins. I was originally going to consider not running him, but playtesting a bunch of hands, I was like, yeah, no, I need this guy. He's Summoning condition is a little, it's a little costly, but he can make up for that with his Dark Lord effect with, you discard any of the Dark Lord cards, you can just pay a thousand and shuffle them back into your deck and take care of them with that way. Next up, I'm running two Dark Lord Amdisk. Only reason I'm really running two is one, it, a lure of darkness and all that good stuff. But I can also make rank six plays with this guy. And if I keep one on one turn, then I can just, contact another one back and go into a rank six. So he's really good. Next, I've been taking this guy in and out, Tuscat Lapoca, but uh, he's nice. He's a nice little hand trap that they have, which basically any Dark Lord would be destroyed. You can just discard him instead. So it's basically return to the Dragon Lords for any of your Dark Lords from your hand. Next, a card that a lot of people aren't running. This is Lucifer himself, Dark Lord Morningstar called, obviously they changed the name from Lucifer over here for religious reasons, cause they can't have, they can't very well have Satan in a children's card game now, can they? But yeah, he's probably the least used of the Dark Lords. I can understand, I would be lying if I said I don't understand why, but he's, he is a nice comeback card. If you can summon him and get his effect off, good Lord, are you in a good spot. Next, I might cut this down to one later, but I'm running two Archlord Christias, mostly because th this entire deck is fairies. You can run her. She is arguably the most broken summon blocker in the game. Not as easy to get out as Vandy's Emptiness or a Fossil Line of Pachycephala or any of the barrier statues, but 28 beater. You get her down. If they don't have an answer for her, you win. Next, this is one of my own personal tech choices. Two Gores. Can go for rank seven plays off of Nastin. Plus he's a dark, so if I don't need him, I can allure him away if my life points are too low. And he's he's the emissary of darkness. Come on, you're playing a dark deck. Run, run this guy. And of course two Maxis, best hand trap of the game. Yada yada yada. Everyone knows what Maxi does and should know by now. All right, now we get into the spell and trap lineup. Three banishment of the Dark Lords. Searches for any Dark Lord card. Very important to note that. It doesn't just search for monsters, so you can just search for any Dark Lord card and go off of your plays from there. Next up, three Contact, also known as Dark Lord Monster Reborn. Three Allure of Darkness, because we managed to pull a bunch of them from the box. And so three. Only two trade-ins. I might put a third one in there at some point. I'm not entirely sure what I'd take out for it below. For, you know, just leave a Leave a comment below on what you'd probably take out for the third trade-in. Uh, two Twin Twisters, because I hate back row. Everyone's running back row in the group, and a lot of people are running back row in real life, too. Two Dark Holes, because, you know, dark deck, black hole, blow up the whole field. Blue Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon away twice in one of my games with Andrew a few minutes ago. 
Uh, one soul shard, because it's broken. Yeah, you're gonna lose a lot of life points, but you set up the right board with this, you win. And that's it for the spells. Dark Lord Enchantment, it's trap card version of Change of Heart. And two Rebellions, nice non-targeting destruction. I might bump this up to three at a later point. All right, now for one token, I'm Emissary of Darkness token. You have to have this token with Gores, come on. I mean, you can summon like Dan Green token or something like that, but why would you? You have Gores, you've kind of right here. All right, now let's get into the extra deck. Like I said, you can make some rank six plays. The rank sixes I'm running are number 24, Ptolemy M7, and Utopia the Beyond. Those are the ones that I think could probably be the most offensive and the most useful. Rank sevens, again, you don't go into them a lot, but I've got Big Eye, Draco Sack, and Flare Metal. I think those are probably the most useful. If I had, if I wanted to do something, I could probably take out the Draco Sack and put in like another rank eight or something, because this deck does go into rank eights a lot. You know, Superbia and all the shenanigans that he pulls off. And next up, speaking of the rank eights, we have Hope Harbinger, Staple. Felgrand, really useful. Number 15, just an additional rank eight dark, so that way I can go to the spiders, because I'm running the spiders in here. And Lancelot, guys, again, rank eight. You never go into rank nine, so I don't run any of them. It's like the one rank this deck doesn't go into aside from five and four and anything below that. Uh, rank tens, dual trains, rail cannons, booyah. Yeah, gener you'll generally never go into these. You'll generally want to keep both itchels on the field. Or maybe if you have like some way to get all three of them out on the field, you make leave one itchel on the field. If you have another Dark Lord that you can just use its effect to pay a thousand number cycle to spell and trap, boom, you can just do one of those and one of these. And spiders, because we can make rank tens. Just going up from any of the rank eights. And 77, because I can. Alright, that's pretty much it. So very beginning stages of the deck. I've made a couple of changes from like the first initial draft, but otherwise it's just gonna go uphill from here. Might take out Lucifer at some point. I might take this deck to our tournament at some point. I don't know. I've been doing a lot of acting on stage. Again, I've got two more weeks for Scrooge. We got shows. Uh, today is the uh, eighth, right? Eighth or ninth? What date? What is the date? I'm bad. I know what ninth. I was. I was pretty spot on. Yeah, we got three shows tonight. Th this weekend out in La Habra. I'm playing Bob Cratchit among other things. And we close next week. The no, no, two weeks. The seventeenth and the no, that is that is next week. The seven, the sixteenth, seventeenth, and eighteenth. So if you want to come out in La Habra, get in the Christmas spirit. Come and check us out in Scrooge. You can also see me and my girlfriend. She's playing my stage wife. That's the other thing that happened recently. So anyways, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and we will catch you guys later.